Welcome to a Legendarium special about Hennig Brand, the alchemist who discovered phosphorus. In this episode, we will talk about how a man searching for the Philosopher's Stone instead added an element to the periodic table. For a man who led a life deserving of remembrance, little is known about Hennig Brand's life. Born around the year 1630, he seems to have grown up and worked in the German port city of Hamburg. Brand did not understand Latin, so he likely did not receive a college education. During his late teens, Brand served as a soldier, likely as a junior officer, in the later phases of the Thirty Years' War. This ruinous conflict caused the deaths of millions. It resulted from Ferdinand II, the Holy Roman Emperor, trying to impose Roman Catholicism on the Protestant states of northern Germany. After the war, Brand earned money as a physician, called himself doctor, and added MD behind his signature. He did this despite having no qualifications in medicine, though given the quality of 17th century medicine, he likely caused no more harm than most actual physicians. Brand also learned the art of glass blowing, one of the essential skills for alchemists and chemists of his time. No apparatus catalogs existed during those days, so the alchemist and his assistants usually made glassware themselves. His bluffing must have worked, for Brand married a wealthy wife with a sizable dowry which allowed him to finance his alchemical research. He also had children with his first wife, yet his life's work became searching for the Philosopher's Stone. Christian Europe believed that the mystical stone transformed everything into its purest form. For humans, that meant being returned to the purity and immortality of the Garden of Eden. That also meant base metals like lead would be transformed into the highest form of metal, namely gold. After his first wife died, Brand married a second woman and had another son with her, whom he recruited into his quest for the Philosopher's Stone. Brand grew to believe that human urine offered a gateway to the elixir of life. Though that sounds strange to us, this reflected usual alchemical thinking. Brand collected 1,500 gallons of urine from his neighbors. This became a common practice during the 17th century, for urine could be used to fertilize crops, soften leather, and clean one's teeth. Self-taught alchemist Brand believed that water had magical properties, made even more powerful by passing through the human body. Since people who drank a lot of beer tend to produce yellowish urine, Brand preferred the urine of heavy drinkers, believing their yellow urine to be rich in gold. In 1669, in Hamburg, Brand evaporated the vast amounts of urine he collected by setting buckets of it in the sun. Along with a strong smell, this produced a black sludge. He left this sludge to mature until worms started appearing in it. Next, he heated the sludge with sand, which produced hot gases and oils, which he condensed using cold water. The final substance to condense became a white, waxy, Aldoy that burst into flames when exposed to the air. Unknown to Brand, human urine contains large amounts of dissolved phosphates. At first, Brand called the remarkable new substance cold fire because it glowed in the dark. He then named it phosphorus, which is Greek for bringer of light. By doing so, the fake doctor became the first named person in history to discover a very real chemical element that could be added to the periodic table. Like most alchemists, Brand hoped that this new invention would help him to discover the Philosopher's Stone. During his work with phosphorus, he likely blew up many things, but came no closer to turning lead into gold or making men live forever. 
Disappointed, Brand eventually shared his secret method of making phosphorus with Gottfried Leibniz, the eminent mathematician and philosopher in exchange for money. Leibniz hoped that this phosphorus might enable him to discover the philosopher's stone where Brand failed. Of course, Brand offended many of his fellow alchemists by sharing his secrets for money, yet he had many children from his two marriages to support, and that ultimately mattered more to him than the opinion of his fellow alchemists. It is not known for certain when Brand died, though he lived until at least 1710 when Leibniz mentioned him as still being alive in one of his letters. Whenever Brand died, his legacy lived on in the discovery of phosphorus. It is now used every time that somebody strikes a match and with no need to involve human urine. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.